Keratosis pilaris is one of the most common skin conditions in the world. In fact, it's the most common skin condition in children, affecting up to 80% of children and affecting up to 40% of adults. Keratosis pilaris in and of itself is not dangerous, but it is most often caused by an underlying condition that the average skin specialist has no clue about that can seriously harm your health over the long term. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with 20 years of clinical experience. Let's talk about keratosis pilaris, what we know about it, what the experts say and what the research says. And then at the end of this video, I'm going to explain to you a very easy fix a way that you can reverse keratosis pilaris in a child that you care about or even in yourself that is based on physiology and an ancestrally appropriate diet. Let's dig into this. There is definitely a small genetic predisposition to keratosis pilaris, but that's not the root cause. The vast majority of cases of KP are caused by a metabolic condition that I'll talk about later in this video. But if you go to some of the preeminent websites uh, for dermatology around the world, you find that doctors don't really know much about keratosis pilaris. They also don't care much about it either unless it involves them uh, making lots of money. So I went to the American Academy of Dermatology's website and they have a page dedicated to KP and they don't even have a question in the FAQ question about what causes keratosis pilaris. They don't even address that at all. The root cause seems important. They don't address that, but they, they do have a question that says, what do dermatologists, how do dermatologists treat keratosis pilaris? And response to that is the skin condition is harmless, so you don't need to treat it. I agree with that statement. It's not harmful in any way to actually have KP. It's the underlying condition that you need to worry about. They say if itch, uh, dryness, and the appearance of your skin bothers you, then treatment can help that. And indeed, there are some treatments that can help the appearance of keratosis pilaris, can help the dryness or the mild itch that some people have with it. But I think it's telling when you look at the list of works cited on the American Academy of Dermatology's website that every single treatment that they want to talk about involves using an expensive laser treatment in the dermatologist's office that they can then bill insurance or bill you for uh, and make a huge uh, percentage profit. I thought that was odd. When you go over to the British Association of Dermatologists website, they do actually ad uh, address the question, what causes keratosis pilaris? And their answer is, we do not fully understand the cause of KP, but it appears to be associated with certain genes. Keratosis pilaris is harmless and is not infectious. And I agree with all that. Uh, it's the root cause of KP that you need to be concerned about. In and of itself, KP is not dangerous to you or to your skin. Keratosis pilaris uh, is also often also sometimes called lichen pilaris or chicken skin or goose flesh, uh, depending on what part of the world you live in. When I started doing research making this video, I found a quite large body of literature in the dermatology uh, research that shows that keratosis pilaris is intimately linked with a condition called hyperinsulinemia. And so it makes perfect sense that hyperinsulinemia, uh, one of insulin's many hundreds of jobs in your body, is it acts as a growth hormone. And so if your insulin level is chronically inappropriately elevated because of the diet you're currently eating, that's going to give inappropriate growth signals to the cells in your skin and it's going to lead to a buildup of keratin which is going to form keratin plugs in hair follicles uh, around hair follicles and in the actual pores of your skin it's most commonly seen kind of on the back of the arm it can also be on the front of the thigh it can be on the face and this can be quite concerning to children who are starting to get to the age where they care about their appearance. And so if there's anything that you can do to address the underlying root cause of this and to reverse this condition, it could really help a child you care about or even an adult you care about to reverse this underlying quite dangerous 
um, condition known as hyperinsulinemia. And once you've corrected that by changing your diet, the keratosis pilaris is either going to get 80 or 90% better or go away completely. Now, when you start talking about uh, insulin resistance or hyperinsulinemia, people immediately start to uh, associate that with obesity, being overweight, but it's very, very common for someone of a normal body, body size, even someone who's slender, to have hyperinsulinemia. The only way that you can test for this is not by looking at their body outwardly. You have to check blood work and you have to check three lab tests. They are hemoglobin A1C, a fasting insulin, and a C-peptide test. If any one of these three tests is even one-tenth of a point elevated, then you have hyperinsulinemia and you are at increased risk of keratosis pilaris. Now, there is definitely a genetic component to this. There's no doubt about that. You have a genetic predisposition. You're more susceptible. But uh, my theory is, is that you have to have an underlying condition known as hyperinsulinemia before your genetic predisposition is going to manifest itself outwardly. Now, one person out of a million who has hyperinsulinemia has something called an insulinoma, which is a tumor that secretes insulin. But the other 99.9999% of people with hyperinsulinemia have that condition because they're eating too many carbohydrates in their daily diet. And most often, these are going to be highly processed junk carbohydrates made from sugar that you're either eating or drinking made from ground up highly processed grains and almost always these junk foods are going to include some vegetable seed oils as well and so for the vast majority of children and adults out there with keratosis pilaris if you just remove all sugar from your diet whether added or naturally occurring and you remove all of the processed grains so anything that's made of ground up wheat, rice, oats, and corn, or that contains high fructose corn syrup. If you get those things, and then anything that contains a large amount of, of vegetable seed oil, like soybean oil, corn oil, canola oil, sunflower, safflower, all these oils are very high in omega-6 fatty acids and can be quite inflammatory to your skin. If you'll remove those things from your diet, keratosis pilaris starts to improve immediately. Now, it may take a few months for it to go completely away, but wouldn't it be awesome to not have to worry about those bumps on your arm or on your face or on your thighs ever, ever again? Wouldn't it be cool to know the root cause? Why did it actually happen to you? And then also to be able to reverse it. Now, there are some things that you can do to improve the symptoms and lessen the appearance of keratosis pilaris while you're correcting your diet and reversing the underlying root cause. Getting more sun on the affected skin is going to help this. Uh, using something that moisturizes your skin like beef tallow or coconut oil on the affected area is gonna make that area more moisturized and softer to the touch and it'll make the little keratin plugs not quite as noticeable. But as I said earlier, nothing you put on the outside of your skin is going to address the root cause, the underlying uh, cause of this. You have to fix that by fixing your diet, which is going to correct the potentially invisible hyperinsulinemia. Now, hyperinsulinemia, I talk about in other videos on this channel, keratosis pilaris is just one of the many outward signs of that. It can be completely invisible. And so the only way to know for sure if you have it is to get the three tests I talked about earlier checked by your doctor. Many doctors don't want to order these tests because they don't even know what they are. So you may have to reach out to an independent lab and have these labs checked on your own dime. If you know someone who suffers from keratosis pilaris, uh, chicken skin, goose, goose skin, goose flesh, please share this video with them because I promise you it is quite concerning to them and they, they are uh, at least some degree affected by this. They don't like it and they would love to get rid of it. So please share this video. Also down in the show notes below, I shared all the research that shows the very strong connection between uh, insulin resistance or more aptly titled hyperinsulinemia and keratosis pilaris. You can check out those links and perhaps print out a few of those studies for your doctor or your dermatologist who perhaps told you, we don't know what causes it. And there's nothing you can do to correct it. 
you maybe can teach that doctor to, to say fewer dumb things in the future. 